Hey, welcome to the show. What's going on? I guess someone changed my Facebook uh, password because I can't get on anymore. What? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, so just I can't see you guys and communicate with you guys. But hello to you. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the show. And uh, let's see here. Are we good? We good. We good. We rock and roll. That's how you do. You keep you keep it moving. We on air, so ain't nothing we can do about that now. Well, well, no, we cool. We cool. It, it just popped up. Oh, okay. You all see how uh, helpful mother is. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, who's that? That was uh, Dolores. Oh, Dolores. How you doing, Dolores? <laughs> From promotions. Okay. She didn't see the light on, I guess. Yeah. Real people, real life situation. The weather is great. It's like 60 degrees. What is it? Someone tell me what the weather is where you are right now. Do I need to go outside? Let me tell you something. It's about, it has to be 60 degrees. Going outside. What is the weather where you are? We want to know. In your neck of the woods. Victoria Walker, Michelle Kinney, Veronica Phillips, Cassandra Johnson. How are you today? Checking in. All right. A lot of hot topics we got to hit, but uh, real people, real situation. We're going to read this letter. I want you to give us your take, your thoughts. Keep it uh, all the way uh, 1,000, if you would. I think our viewers always keep it 1,000, that's for sure. Uh, hello to Jesse Smollett, who is now at the buffet <laughs> of his choice. Oh, boy. Poor Jesse. Poor Jesse. I, I think somebody put him up to this. This was a whole bigger plot. Yeah, I think it's bigger than him. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you. No one could, could could really do that because the report's coming out now that he sent those letters to himself, mm -hmm. the threatening, racist, homophobic letters he sent them to himself at the studio. Though that's yeah. that's the thing. Why why send them to the studio? But they knew where he lived. You know what I'm saying? They right. knew where he lived to come attack him, but they sent the letters to the studio. They wanted to bring some attention to um, Empire. Finally, Haley Daniels. Finally, <laughs> made me sick when he did that. Like we don't care. Like like all, all like all all straight men um, are against uh, homosexuals. That's not the case right. at all. You know, it, it, it's just that homosexual. Uh, well, heterosexual men, they, they, they don't really, they don't live that lifestyle, so they don't, they're not about to, they love you. Right. they going to kick it with you, but they're not about to necessarily be in a parade. Right. And when it came time, what would happen to Jesse, you would have to be a heartless person. Well, what we thought happened to Jesse, uh, you would have to be a heartless, whack person, not to care, not to come to his aid. That's our brother. So we were upset. Finally! We were upset. I said it because he did that to Steve Harvey. He right. used Steve Harvey video and put it up. Like, what do you mean, finally? What, 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 Steve? I never heard of Steve this. Right. So I was like, what does that mean? No, let's just get, let's get the clowns who did this to Jesse. Well, we got him. <laughs> it was Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse did man, this. Man, I'm Jesse. so mad about that because the first day I was, I was like, man, we got to get these dudes, man. Whoever did this, we gonna get them. And and at the same time, um. I want to say this because I said it yesterday. Uh, because when you say something about a victim, or I call them accusers. To me, you're not a yes. victim. You are an accuser. You're not a victim. Maybe like you're victimizing. You're not a victim until the person that you accuse has been found guilty. Absolutely. So people have the right to question a person who's accusing. Nowadays, if someone accuses you, you did it, and that's not cool. Now, let me tell you the other thing that I don't like about this: is people who have been who have been hurt, who have been uh, molested, people who have been sexually assaulted. This is why they feel that they can't come out and tell because when people lie, right? Now, people now now you 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 messing things up here. So so I get, so you can't do that. Have liars just hijacking right. the move, movement. Right. 
That's not cool, man. There's people out here that that that's going through this, and now they now they feel even worse now telling a story that will people believe them because you because you wouldn't did this mess. Not cool. So I'm reading something now. This is a real hate crime. This took place right here in Atlanta on someone who looks a little, who looks like a little brother to me. I just, they just popped up on my guy Rick Party's page. But yeah, now that's a hate crime there. Yeah. Reported right now. I'm looking at that. And then all this stuff is happening in Black History Month. And nobody's paying attention to it. I want, I want you all, before I, before I read this letter, I got to wake y'all up. Nobody wants to wake up. Pay attention to what happened. Okay? I'm, do, I got to do this real quick. I got two minutes. You didn't stand. Everybody didn't stand with Kaepernick. It was cool for a little while. Okay? Because I saw y'all criticizing Kaepernick for taking the bag from the NFL. If I was him, I would have took it too. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't stand with him, you did, you kept watching the, the games. You you everybody was talking about the, the the Super Bowl was whack because your team wasn't there. Yet Kaepernick was told that his talents was not good, but yet the NFL what was not needed anymore, or they didn't need him. No one could use him, but the NFL could find they could find players. Okay, they could bring players back who beat they beat up a girl, right? Beat up their woman. Violated the drug policy, they get second chances. They can find somewhere second, to put third, them. Fourth, third, fourth, fifth. Yeah. Okay. Pay attention, my friend. When all this went down, when we read about Nike hooking Kaepernick up, oh, that's dope. No, pay attention. Y'all don't pay attention. And they know you don't pay attention, so they play off the fact that we're going to go against each other. Right. And what they did was they went on and gave him a nice deal. He made some money because they knew that we was going to support him and we was going to go spend spend the money. Nike, at the end of the day, is the one who won. They still support the, the NFL is still buying stuff from them. All sports are buying stuff from them. So Nike still wins off of him kneeling. True. NFL gives him the bag. He can't disclose or say anything else. But when they gave him the bag, they gave it to him in Black History Month. Notice they waited and settled in Black History Month. Look at all the stuff that's going on to distract you from what you need to do. Then, so you had, was it Blueberry? Burberry. <laughs> Not Blueberry. I know. I know, being funny. <laughs> they, they're accused of the, the noose. Yeah. You had Adidas accused with, with some races on the shoe. You had, you had Floyd Mayweather going by the Gucci after all that happened. You had Prada with the monkey on the side of the, of, of the bag. You all, not, you got to stay woke, people. And then all this stuff happens right? in Black History Month. And this is the shortest month. The shortest month. All this drama. I don't know what's going on. All right. <laughs> Just stay woke. Wake up. Wake up. Yeah. But when you, when you, when you go, when you do, when you fight like this, know that you're probably going to be out there by yourself. And I get it. I get why some people didn't. I get why you didn't. But don't trip on Kaepernick. All right. Man, live on uh, Facebook right now. Just went off my little rant. Z-A-K, how y'all doing today? Uh, get your tickets now to hang out with Tom Joyner, man. One more time experience featuring Frankie Beverly and Kim. June 7th at the Wolstein, WZAKCleveland.com, where you can get your tickets This is the moment of the show where you give your perspective to the person who sent their letter in. Feel free to email me at samsilkwithawad.com. All right, let's read that letter. Okay. Dear Sam, my fiancé and I are getting married this summer. Well, at least supposed to. But she has a serious spending problem as it pertains to this wedding. The costs keep getting bigger and bigger. We already live paycheck to paycheck in keeping it 100. I recently found out that she has been robbing Peter to pay Paul with our bills. She tries to live like we got it like that, but we really don't. We are both divorcees, so it's not like we haven't had a wedding before. But the expense of this wedding is causing me to second guess my decision to marry her. Is my girl acting like a bougie ghetto superstar, a sign of hard financial, hard times financially to come? Should I cut my losses now? All right. All right. 
I was still tripping on Jesse Smollett. So, what's his problem? The wedding costs too much. That's what we're we talking about. Well, she's she's uh, robbing Peter to pay Paul um, for the bills, mm-hmm. and then she's spending a whole bunch of money on their wedding. Mm-hmm. And he said they don't have it like that. And is it a bad decision to keep go for it with the wedding? I will sit her down now. This is the perfect time now to have a conversation about that because you get married. You get married, and if you're having these money problems right now before you get married, you're going to have a hell of a problems when you do get married. This is the time right now you need to say, hey, baby, we need to have a conversation and bring bring the bills all in front. I understand. You know, women want to have a nice uh, the blowout wedding, and they want to, you know, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. But this is why some men say, I don't want to get married yet. Just wait mm. for reasons like that because we feel the financial pressure. You got to do what you got to do. You want to make your wife happy. But if you don't have it like that, what do you do? Let me tell you something. This is just my opinion. I'm not telling y'all what to go do with your money. But to me, to me, if the wedding going to cost you ten dollars or $20,000 and you're going to still be living in an apartment, that's a waste of money. Tell it. Okay? You should be using that money, in my opinion, to go buy a house. Okay? Better. That's what I would do. And make because you don't want to go in go in that thing into debt like that. But I get it. You want all the pictures for Instagram and just the fairy tale thing happen. Let me tell you some half them people that's in your wedding would not be calling you to see how you're doing. They would not call you to check on you later on. Because people want to come to your wedding. Some of them, you know, just nosy as hell. Right. You invite all these people trying to impress people. You invite people from your job that you know damn well you don't like, but you do it anyway because it's political. And they're going to talk about you. And they're going to talk about you. Yeah. So you really want to only have the people that you know that got your best interest at your wedding. Don't go into debt to entertain no damn body. Why you want to do that for? Okay? Church. I'm I'm keeping it 100 with y'all. 1,000, 1 million. But that's just me. You can have a great wedding with 20 or 30, 40, 50 people. You don't need all them on, folk. 5780931, what you got to say? Ninety-three. All right, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Ooh, what a day. And half the people, you won't even know in five, ten years. No. I don't even remember the people who were at my wedding. Let me tell you something, man. Let me tell you something. I get why people want to do that. I get it. But once I've been through it, let me tell you something, man. How many of them folk you really still talk to that came to your wedding? Shoot, the people in the wedding. Do you even <laughs> talk to them? Do you talk to them? <laughs> All your bridesmaids and groomsmen. You don't even know those people anymore. Uh, 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 Demetrius says, do uh, do leave. It's what? Do leave. I hate when people call me on the scam phone. Uh, don't call me anymore. I'm washing my booty. <laughs> Hello? That's how you handle them. And they hung right up, too. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, can't, I can't stand them calls. People be calling you like that. Let's take some calls, man. You know. Sam Silk Show, hello. Hey, Sam, you dead right. My first wedding cost me $10,000. Lasted two damn years. <laughs> $5,000 a year. The second wedding I got cost me $500. we have been together five years. <laughs> Yeah, hell with them people. Right. Sit her down and let her know, babe, if you do this now, you're going to do it later. And it's just marrying you. Right. Because <laughs> me 10000 the first time, man. man. That cost 5000 a year. Right, right, <laughs> For two right. years. Yeah. Man, you you real with it. Keep it real, baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, now. Sam Silk Show, hello. Uh, hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you today? I'm good, Queen. Talk to us. Help, help the woman out. Listen, now, I don't know. I, I kind of got in the car. I think I caught the end of it. But if I'm getting the gist of it, it's just about an elaborate wedding. Well, they are broke. And and the, the fiancé, the gentleman, he, you know, the, his, his woman is, is robbing. They're robbing Peter to pay Paul. And she's mm. spending all this money on a wedding. And they don't have anything left. It's like, this is it. And he's like, look, we well, don't you have know any what? money. He, he should. 
shouldn't he shouldn't even marry her because that's starting off wrong anyway. That's letting him know right there where she's putting her morals and values at because it ain't got to be nothing elaborate. We're together. We love y'all. Till we tie a string around our finger. And then <laughs> trying to invite all them all bougie people and all that stuff. Yeah, you ain't right. going to see them people no more. You, right. you know what I'm saying? You Invite a couple people, a handful of people, take your butt down to the courthouse or something, you know, and go on sign the papers. And then later on, once y'all get y'all things together, go on and have a wedding. Because you know what? You can still get married again. You don't have yes. to, you know, just because it's the first time or whatever, you know. Yeah. They, they got their morals messed up. You know, they, they, they need a home. There's a lot of stuff that you're going to need now that y'all start your lives together, you know. Right, so right, right. I need... that's just, that just, that's just bull crap, yeah, you know. And, yeah. Yeah, so uh, you know he might not. He did that. You know what? If that's what, if that if he's doing it to impress her or to impress anybody, that's starting off on the wrong foot anyway. You better get his priorities together. He's gonna be broke going into the marriage. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. All right, I love you guys. You guys are great. Love you back. Appreciate you. Sam Silk Show. Yes, I have an opinion on the wedding and her bills. Yes, please. I think she should take that money that she robbing Peter to pay Paul with and uh, pay them off before he commits to anything. Because if she's already in debt, she's only going to dig a deeper debt trying to have this extravagant wedding. So I think they need to pause for the cause and clean up some bills and then take it from there after things are straightened out financially. Yeah, you're right. I'm going to tell them how, how they can save money uh, right now on your DJ. And I'm a DJ. So, right. so I'm gonna tell you now on your DJ, uh, just tell just tell them you need you only want the sound system for a hundred dollars, and then tell them you need the cord to hook up to your phone, um, and play right. the, play, the, play the music from your phone. Put on a mixtape. I can get Bill right. Black to give you a mixtape. Uh, as far as right. desserts, go to your local uh, 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 bakery. Go, in, yeah. <laughs> they can they can they can they can do it real inexpensive That's and right. real. Um, intimate, yeah. but if she's trying to be all and bougie and, and literally right. be all her look, means, look, look. that's not going to stop today. And, and then you can go to the uh, to the uh, club and get the picture man at the club to be your photographer. Right. <laughs> and you can get your family to cook the food. You can go to Pack and Tan and Marshall's and buy all your decorations. Oh, it can be done, but she got to be smart about it, and he got to be extra smart because money hard to come by. Yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. Me and you on the same page. Yeah, straight up. All right, take I, care. I, I saw some beautiful, beautiful plastic uh, utensils. They was really these. They had a nice design on them. That's yep. right, Dean. Yep. Dean, yep. Dean. you damn right. Gonna That's go, right. It's going to Dean Supply. Everything you need at your wedding, you can go over to Dean's. All right. Right. <laughs> Well, at least you didn't say the dollar store. I thought that was coming next. <laughs> you broke it all the way down. You didn't gave these people some cupcakes. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. I'm going to go right there at Dave's. Hey, Dave, hey, look here. I'm getting married. Two weeks. I need I need two of these. I need this cake. I need two of them I need to make one big size. Mm, mm, mm. See, I don't know if we need to break it down that far. I mean, dang. <laughs> ah. Okay. Yeah, All right. So Let's read these comments before we go. Okay. So the comment that uh, Demetrius said, I think he was saying, I do believe it's time to have a real heart to heart because if you don't, it's going to become a problem that is slowly growing in you every day. And uh, Suze Suzanne said, communicate because she's not. Yeah. 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 Definitely. You definitely need to do that. Now, Lise says, uh, you love her, so you owe yourself to try to work it out. Definitely. And talk for real. Yeah. For real, real. Uh, if you do all you can and she still uh, keeps spending crazy, then run. It's not going to change I'm after marriage. You, bro. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You can see all the signs there. All the red flags are right there. And our buddy Steve said, first off, you're leave it living in sin, <laughs> shacking and still living check to check. You can do that on your own, so obviously you're not smart enough to base your living oh, expenses oh, off one oh, income. Oh. Leave now and avoid bankruptcy. Oh. Yeah. 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 Antoinette said, you right. Keep it real as long as you have each other. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, get your tickets now for the R&B Ball. It's going to be April 13th. We are at the... Uh, Mediterranean Party Center. I'm inviting the whole city out. Now, this is a dress-up affair. You got to come correct. You got to get that suit. You got to get that dress. You got to...
take time to get groomed up, all right? Suited and booted. Suited and booted. Now, early bird tickets are 15 and 2 for 25 for a limited time at samsilkandawide.com or at any Sam Silk Chicken and Fish location. Trust me, it's going to be bananas. Two ballrooms, food, whole nine. Uh, you got some entertainment that's going to jump off. You got three of the hottest DJs in the city. And we're going to have a time. That's right. All right. Bring some low shoes so, so you can dance. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 